back to Simply Fajika, a place for budding and aspiring entrepreneurs. I do want to welcome you here for another week here at the channel. And if this is your first time stopping by, I want to thank you for stopping by to check us out and see what we're doing over here at the channel. My name is Fajika and I do serve the community as a business mentor. And I do help people to achieve obtaining their non-medical home care licenses. Guys, before we go any further, make sure you like the video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel. And last but not least, do not forget to hit that bell notification so that you're notified every time I release a new video. Three years into this, you guys know how I roll. As I have conversations in the field with some of my clients, I purpose them into videos that hopefully will help you. And so this is the question that we're going to be discussing today. What if I am in a client's home and they are unsure about starting services? Guys, if that's something you want to listen to, and I hope it is, then stay tuned. So for those of you who have operated a home care agency, you know that if a person calls you, that is a blessing. But if you actually get into a customer's home, you are really almost there. So it's really up to you now to, to seal the deal, to really make the client feel comfortable in choosing you as a provider of choice. And so if you get into a situation where you're talking to this person and they really just aren't all the way convinced, then I have created five tips that will hopefully help you out. So let's start with tip one. The first thing you need to do is understand the concern. And listen, we all know this from communication, from one-on-one -on -one communication. There is nothing like not being understood. So if a person is unsure this is not the time to let the silence do the heavy lifting. This is really a time for you to get in and understand what is occurring. So you'll either notice a person kind of gets silent or they just kind of have that pause. If you notice that, really get in there. Okay, Mrs. Client, you don't seem too unsure. Can you tell me what's going on? So, if, so something just unassuming, you're not accusing them of anything. You're not getting upset. You merely want to understand so you can help them through the uncertainty. So once the person shares with you what the concern is, the second step is for you to address the concern. Guys, I would say the second biggest thing that is frustrating to me when I'm communicating with someone is if I finally break down and tell you what's going on and then nothing happens. So if the client was unsure and they took the time to explain to you they were unsure, then what you can do is address the concern. And guys, the best way to do this is to address it head on. Depending on what the concern is, you definitely want to restate the concern and then you want to talk through how you can address it. And guys, this is not a time to fake it till you make it. So if you don't have an answer, then you can at, you can come back with, so how can I help you with that? Let's say it's payment. Let's say they don't know how they're going to pay you every month. Well, you don't either, right? But you can continue the conversations by saying, thank you so much, Ms. Fajika, for sharing that concern with me. So how can I help you through that? Okay, it's just something as simple as that. If it's money related, then that's a little bit different, a little bit more sensitive, but it's going to require the same approach. Mrs. Fajika, thank you so much for sharing that information with you. I understand that this could be a real sensitive topic for you. Do you mind if you and I explore some payment options? And so this is where you can go back to my video <laughs> and pull up some payment methods that's discussed there and see if any of those things are a right fit for your client. But this is, if the person is giving you permission, this is where you don't want to be shy. You really want to sensitively really go through a list of what those things could potentially be. Because the population that we're serving is, on a lot of times, they're on a fixed income. So you want to make sure that you can speak to how your service is not only what they need, how it can actually fit into their current budget. Although I know that some of you are like, wow, that's a great idea, I'll implement that. There is gonna be some of you who are gonna say, uh-uh, that's money, I'm not touching it. That's fine as well, right? 
but you want to be prepared that this is going to happen a lot in this business where a person knows that they they need our care they want our care but they're not quite sure how they're going to pay for it so if your thought process is well that's not the client for me that's fine but then for some of us we really have to learn then how do we work with that person work with what they have so that they can cover the expenses of the care. The third tip I have for you is to build trust. Now, it again, this is sensitive issue. It's a sensitive concern. We may not even at this point quite understand the reason for the hesitancy. And so you wanna build trust. You really wanna let your client know that you are there as a partner. You want to be a trusted partner with them. And you're there to start what will hopefully become a long-standing relationship. So you want to say some of those things. Call back to the conversation some of the things that the person shared with you and how you hope for those things to come to pass. I'll give you an example of that. Mrs. Fajika, thank you for sharing with me your concern in terms of you just really have never had someone come into your home. It's making you a little hesitant in moving forward. I can assure you that we are a reputable business. We have over 60 years of experience combined between my home care aides and my providing care. And so we have a lot of experience behind us that we can utilize to serve you. And really what I would like to do is set up something that you and I are comfortable with so we can move forward in a positive direction. So See, again, it's using their name, it's restating the issue, and then you're selling your service. You're selling your end of what you bring to the table individually to let the client know that they're not in this by themselves. Again, you want to make sure that you're building trust every step of the way. The fourth step I have for you is to build rapport. <laughs> and building rapport is really where you're building that relationship. You know, hopefully along the way you've picked up little nuggets that that person's been talking about, maybe some activities that they like to do, um, maybe things they like to do with their friends. So you can throw some of those things back. Um, you know, I know in my early years, um, I used to work at contact centers and we used to talk about building bridges. And so this is a perfect way for you to build a bridge between you and your potential client. Just building that rapport, really kind of giving them just like a small glimpse of what a relationship with you could look like. What a professional relationship with you would look like. The fact that, listen, you're going to be a client of theirs, but you're going to care for them. You're going to understand that they have individual needs and you're going to try your best as a business to meet those needs. It's very important for someone if they're deciding whether or not to go with you as a business. The last and final tip that I have for you is you wanna gain commitment. Now, I will tell you, this may not happen in a day. Depending on what the issue is and how severe it is, you may need to have a couple of conversations. You may have to follow up with that person. It may not work the way you expect it to. So it's okay if by the end of that in-person meeting, that person isn't willing to sign up for the service, it's okay. But what can you get a commitment for? Okay, so Fajika, I understand you're not willing to sign with us today because you wanted to speak with your daughter about securing services. But you did say I could follow up with you Monday. Now, what time should I be following up with you on Monday? Okay, so as that person gives you that time, you start conversating again. You start Because remember, we're building rapport. We're establishing trust. So you're still doing this, right? But at the end of it, thank you so much. I've had such a lovely time. I really look forward to working with you and your family. And as a reminder, I'm calling you Monday. Calling you and your daughter on Monday at 1 o'clock so we can go ahead and get started working together. Okay, guys, so that was my last tip, but I'm really going to throw it back at you so you can start the conversation in the comments. What do you do if you speak to someone who is unsure about starting services with you? I would love for you to sound off in the comments. Guys, that's all I have for this video. Do not forget to like it. If you haven't already, don't forget to like the video. Do not forget to subscribe. And then don't forget to hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I drop a new video. That's all I have for you guys today. Stay blessed.